Morning. 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 Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good. Fantastic. Good. Happy fall, you guys. It's fall, isn't it? I think it's fall. Yes. Well, we have some visitors here today. I know there's some visitors from Abbotsford. There's some visitors from... Where did you say? I've already lost where. Your dad. Fort St. John. I think that's it. Oh. Ben's parents are here from Victoria. Welcome, Ben's parents, even though they're not here to hear it. Yes, that's great. And it's good to have the regulars here. It's always good to see everyone. And, you know, all properly spaced and all that. Good job. Good job. Um, we've had a month of the theme of hope. And um, I have to put my glasses on, of course. We had Christine talk about hope. We had Wilf talk about hope. Mr. Penner and then Marion also gave her testimony about hope. And um, there's a fellow named N.T. Wright, and he has written a book entitled Surprised by Hope, Rethinking Heaven, the Resurrection, and the Mission of the Church. And, you know, in keeping with this theme, I hope I get to read this book when my sister's finished with it. <laughs> She's the one who has the book right now. Anyways, there's two sort of themes in this book. There's uh, hope for the future after death, for us as believers, and hope for life here on earth. So um, when you think about uh, us living in hope of a new heaven and a new her earth, there are lots of books, and I'm sure there, I don't do it, but you know, like YouTubes and people online and people speaking about this, the topic of what this new heaven and new earth is going to look like. And we really don't know what that's going to look like but we know with our God that it's going to be amazing. So that's the hope for the future for us after death. But we have hope for life here on earth as well. And our source of hope is tied to Christ's resurrection. So when you think about it, our salvation is tied to that. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. God's care, his love, his provision. We, we think of a verse like um, Jeremiah 29 that talks about his plans to prosper us and to not to harm us and to give us a hope and a future. We have a truly nurturing and loving Heavenly Father. And then also tied to the resurrection though is our mission, our mission here on earth. And, and what are our responsibilities while we're here? Because we still have, we don't know how long it is, but we all have, um, time here on earth. So, and I was thinking about it the other day, I'm not a terribly long distance from retiring, and I'm thinking, you know, what's that going to look like? You know, have, theoretically, can have some more time, and what, what do I want to be involved in? What would I take on as a new volunteer roles, or, you know, it's going to be opportunity to just do some interesting and neat new things, um, like not clean my house and not do those things that, you know, we get tied to now, that I spend so much time doing. Um, COVID has really knocked a weird one into our world, hasn't it? I mean, we, I mean it, we, we've had a youth group that doesn't even meet anymore because they're not able to meet. You guys are all, generally speaking, sitting the distance that you're supposed to from each other. We have this whole two meter spacing and all this stuff and wearing masks and washing our hands and all the things that COVID has thrown in. And so it's changed how we meet people. It's changed how we interact with people. And it's made it in some ways really awkward because you don't really know how to interact and how do we still reach out to a world when we're not supposed to reach out in that tangible way that we often do? And we all walk in different walks of life, right? We all have contact with different people, which is a really neat part about our family, is that we reach out and we just go out. We, we meet here on Sundays, but we network out into the community. In Micah 6, 8, it says, He has shown you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. We can live here on earth in hope as we act justly and love mercy and walk humbly with our God. Let's just open with a word of prayer. God, we're so thankful that you love us, that you're with us, that you care, that you've given us hope. And in some ways, I often wonder how people can cope without that knowledge, without, not that we're always feeling, that our feelings kind of get ahead of us sometimes when we don't feel particularly encouraged, but we know we have that solid foundation and we can hope both in our future 
but we can also hope as we uh, do this life on earth as you've instructed and as you care for us and look after us and guide us. I pray that you be with us now and right now I'll just pray for the, the needs in our congregation. They're listed in the bulletin there and we uh, I just encourage everyone to read and to take those um, requests home and pray. And I pray right now for each one as, as they're listed there, God. Many are hurting and in need and we pray also for those who aren't here today that you bless them and surround them with your love and your goodness. And we thank you now, in Jesus' name, amen. And the worship team will come now, please. Good morning, everybody. If you'd like to stand and sing with us.
I didn't really refer to the bulletin. Is there anyone who did not get a bulletin today? Everybody got a bulletin? Okay. There's not a lot of announcements in there, but take it home because, like I said, there's a, a prayer list there that you can go through during the week, and I know those people would really appreciate your prayers. And also there's a pretty amazing quote in there by Charles Spurgeon that would be fridge-worthy, I think. So take your bulletin home. So as uh, we know, Ed and Ruth Ann are still self-isolating, and they'll be, I guess, free to roam again as of Tuesday, the 29th. So we have a special guest speaker here today. Uh, he's known as Carl Weeb to most of you. And um, Carl was born just a few years ago in Warman, Saskatchewan. I think that's a great name. Like, we could adopt that name, right? War War yeah, you get it, Warman. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, uh, he's number four of nine children, and Carl and Rita have three boys, eight grandchildren, two great-grandchildren, so, and he's a, a man of one wife, Rita, the lovely Rita, and his hobbies are camping, fishing, woodworking, etc. He went to Chislata School, I did not know that, so there's a little tidbit for you to know. Not the Chislata School that's down past Wisteria, but the other one, towards the falls. So it's not there anymore, but anyways, there's a little trivial pursuit question for you for future use. Um, and those of us who know Carl, we just know him to be an all great, all round great guy. So uh, Carl is going to share with us this morning. So Carl, turn it over to you. Thank you. Good morning. I haven't done a children's story for so long. So I don't know if I'm going to know how to do that, but generally when we did that, I would sit on the top step and everybody would kind of gather around there. But I don't think we can do that this time. So anyway, I will, I will tell you a couple of stories. And um, the first story is probably happened in about 1970, early 70s. A couple came from Russia to the United States, to New York, a couple and their teenage son. And when they got off the boat, they had one suitcase and $35. And they started looking for a place to rent. They, they, they couldn't communicate real well, the language barrier, the culture barrier, all that stuff. So they kept going from one place to the next to the next. Always the story was the same. Not enough money, not enough money. Finally, they found a, a, uh, an apartment that they could afford. So they rented the apartment and they went in there and they had, there was the three of them and one suitcase. And that's it. Nothing, nothing more. Not understanding a language not understanding the culture. They sat there for a while, maybe for a couple hours, kind of wondering what would happen next. And uh, all of a sudden there was a knock on the door. And of course, made them a bit nervous, coming from the Soviet Union, who would be coming to our house, we don't know anybody here. They opened the door and there was the landlady. She didn't, she didn't own the building, she, was, she just looked after it. There was a landlady there with all the people from the neighborhood. And uh, they brought them stuff. There was food, there was blankets, there was pots and pans, there was all that stuff. The guy actually turned out to be a comedian here in, or in, in, the, in the US. And he said, when we looked at all that stuff, here we were in America, we had a toaster made in Japan, we had French bread, we had Canadian bacon, and he just kind of went on like that. <laughs> Unbelievable. He just said, people just don't do that. But they did. So as time went on, they each got a, everybody got a job, and a couple of months went by, and all of a sudden, they realized that the rent here in their apartment was just as much as the other places. But the, uh, 
their landlady, their landlord lady, had topped their rent off for two months. So uh, as time went on, he got a job working, uh, washing dishes in a hotel. And after a while, when he picked up the language a bit more and the culture, he, he, there was nightly entertainment there and he um, liked the comedian there. So he would, in his spare time, or, his, or on his breaks, he would go and, and watch this comedian and he thought, boy, I might be able to do that. So his, the guy that owned the hotel, his boss said, well, go ahead and try it. If it works out for you, get your act together. If it works out for you, fine, you go. If it doesn't work out for you, come on back. I have a job for you. So he did. And he was, he was successful. Years went by, he became a successful comedian. So that was another story. I have another story I'd like to tell you, which happened a little closer to home. But first I have to tell you another little story to set the stage for story number three. A um, teacher in, the, in a grade one class asked her, her students to draw a picture of something that they were thankful for. And so they kind of thought about it for a bit and then people started, the kids started drawing pictures and except this one little girl, she was struggling. So uh, the teacher went over there and, and, and said, are you having trouble finding something that you're thankful for? And she said, oh no, no, uh, I'm really thankful for God. But God is just too big. He won't fit on this page. Anyway, I want you to remember that when I tell you this next story. That uh, this next story is all about God, not about anybody else. Uh, we have, for the last 15 years or so, worked for a lot of people in Burns Lake. And again, I want you to remember this is not about Carl, this is about God. These numbers are all about God. We did a, a little tour one time, trying to figure out, trying to count the places that we might have worked in and for people and businesses. And we probably came, or we came to about 225. And I'm sure we missed some. And here I have Little, uh, oh, come on, girl. Here I have little notes, thank you notes, pat you on the back notes, little cards from the people. All nicely organized in alphabetical order. <laughs> I should have been a librarian, I think. <laughs> anyway, out of uh, all the people that we worked for, we have found people to be extremely generous, extremely gracious and very, very kind. Yeah. All these little notes. I could, yesterday, I looked through some of our invoices to try and figure out maybe how many invoices we would have written out in the last 15 years. And a lot of repeat customers, and it was probably around 600 or more. I'm comfortable with saying 600 over those 15 years. It was little jobs. I went over the months by months, different years, and there was always four, five, sometimes seven, eight, nine people invoices in one month, because it was little jobs. And so, uh, so out of those 600 invoices, there's three invoices that have been neglected. So if you, do the, if you do the math, the negative ones is like 0.005%. So the majority of that is 
are, are positive and good out of, out of all those people, out of all those invoices. And uh, in First Chronicles 16, verse 8, it says, Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sometimes you see at, uh, at, at ball games or hockey games or baseball games, the players, some of them will, when, the, when, when they've scored a goal or whatever, they will go down on their knees and they'll do this. And they are praising the Lord, thanking the Lord. And when I look at this, that's, that's what I do. This is, this is really only a part of that because we have some um, text messages from people that are very positive and very nice. We have phone calls and just people that we have worked for in general have, have said thank you and are just generous and nice and kind. I think uh, this world is full of clips like that, what we saw up there. People are generous, people are kind, people will go out of their way to help you. That has been our experience. Now, when we, sometimes when we see the media, well, watch the news in the media, we don't really get that picture. We get something that's totally different. I think these, these uh, thank you notes and the invoices that we have at home is a really good cross-reference of all the people. I think we've worked for uh, every people from every vocation uh, in, in life in Burns Lake, from just, just everybody, except maybe lawyers, but <laughs> <laughs> I was, wasn't sure whether I should say that or not. But <laughs> if, if you can bleep that out, that would be good. <laughs> No, we have just found people to be very generous and very kind and gracious to us. And uh, out of, I think it's a really good cross-section of people. So I think that holds true for, for everything. We see one negative episode on TV of somebody that did something wrong. And everybody is stamped with the same stamp. And I don't think that's right. I think there's way more of those kind of good, positive things out there in the world than there is negative. But for some reason, society likes to focus on the negative. I just, I just know, know that from more experience, people have been kind and generous and uh, gracious to us. I think. I, should have, I was going to explain this in the beginning. I think sometimes the word hope can be exchanged for, uh, for faith or for trust. And that's what I've done this morning. I, I've, I've changed the word, used hope and trust, or faith and trust rather than hope, because faith and trust in mankind. So that's... That's my, those are my stories for this morning. I just think that I see people here that I've worked for that are generous and kind and considerate. So uh, I was thinking to myself, when I go out there and I do business with people, which envelope do I contribute to? Do I contribute to this one? Or do I contribute to the, the little one? And the little one I didn't even bring because you know, it's so minor. So, you know, it's my job to, con to contribute to waitresses and waiters and doctors and mechanics and policemen. Make sure that I fill their big folder with good news. Psalms 67 verse one says, may God be merciful and bless us. May his face smile with favor upon us. I will pray and then that you will be dismissed. Oh. Can I add something? Sure, you sure can. Just to, just to add.
just to, for the record. Sure. But uh, you mentioned about lawyers. Yeah. And. Um, <laughs> Uh, coming back to bite me already. No, 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 not at all. The, uh, I, I just wanted to say that the former lawyer as well as the lawyer we have right now have done quite a bit for our church and they never charge us anything. They yeah. say we don't charge the church. Yeah. So I, I think that's just great too. I, 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 I'm sorry, Bill. I, I just, I worked. We've worked for policemen, and we've worked for doctors, and we've worked for all of that, but we've never worked for lawyers. That's... <laughs> but, but thank you. Thank you so much, Bill. So, so now I will pray and ask for forgiveness. <laughs> thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. Thank you for this time together here. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you would bless us as we go from here, that, would be, that we would be light and salt out there in the world and um, just fill the right envelope with being kind and generous to people. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs>